so welcome students to our next session of module 2 and we are continuing our metal forming processes in the previous lecture we have discussed about the basic ideas of metal forming processes we have also discussed about uh, some of the common metal forming processes as extrusion forging rolling uh, drawing etc and we have also seen the classifications of uh, metal forming process as um, sheet metal forming or and bulk metal forming process so today as i earlier discussed with you we will be discussing on uh, plastic region there is a stress strain diagram i will try to uh, recapitulate uh, you might already know about the stress strain diagram but I just want to uh, recapitulate the concepts regarding the stress strain diagram once more. So now let us uh, start this session. So before starting just I want to sh uh, show you some commonly used uh, metal forming processes. Uh, previously I discussed with you just to show you the pictures. Look the first pictures over here. Here is given a die and the molten metal or the red hot metal uh, can be given desired shape by the use of this die giving the pressure. Okay. Similarly, here you can also see a die and the metal is you know formed or you can say given a shape of the desired requirement you can say. Okay. Similarly, here it is a extrusion process I already discussed with you but uh, this is the picture of this extrusion process and about the extrusion numericals I will take another class a separate class for the uh, numerical for covering the numerical portions of the different uh, commonly used metal forming processes such as extrusion or wire drying or rolling um, forging okay. So for now I will be just discussing the theoretical portions as well as um, giving you a concept of the different uh, commonly used processes along with their um, uh, pictures as well okay so this is the ruling you can see over here this, these are the rulers these are the rulers and the metal is being um, the size of the metal the thickness of the metal is being reduced okay and similarly here is also the extrusion process you can see over here okay now <coughs> let us consider this stress strain curve you you guys already know you have already started this stress strain curve now this is for ductile materials as you can see over here this is for ductile material especially for low carbon steel they are giving okay. Now for brittle material you already know that uh, for brittle material this uh, curve is somewhat you know I can show you the curve goes somewhat like this one sorry. So it is somewhat this one much stiffer than the ductile material. So this is the uh, stress strain curve for any materials, uh, brittle material you can take. Okay. So there is no such uh, you know maximum point. It is just the breaking point. Okay, and no case of uh, yielding at all. Um, so it is somewhat different from ductile material, and uh, here we deal with only two stress. Okay. So I will not be discussing much uh, in detail for this type of car. I will be directly you know uh, coming to the uh, this ductile material as because we are mainly we will be mainly dealing with ductile materials. We will also be dealing with some brittle materials also but for, but for now just let us stick to this particular stress strain diagram of ductile material okay. Now look you already know this curve and this one proportional limit you can see over here up to this proportional limit Hooke's law is valid this one Hooke's law is valid okay now this is the yield point that I was mentioning earlier that up to you know this region this one this region we are having the elastic this one is elastic this one is elastic okay so up to yielding 
this one is the elastic region so we are not concerned with the elastic region but we are concerned with this after after that region from say this one from this one this whole region okay so this is the plastic region this is the plastic region so we are concerned with the plastic region okay and talking about this particular stress strain guard you already know uh, the different points proportional limit where the hooke's law is valid uh, here you can see sigma goes to e into epsilon uh, where sigma is stress e is the young's modulus and epsilon is the strain you already know these things okay just to uh, remember you once more and this region look from here to here the last point and the yielding from where the yielding point is starting this point to this point this one so this is the strain hardening region so this is the region i was talking about that is the plastic region now uh, here is also this is the engineering st uh, stress strain curve you can see over here this one and this curve this one okay this curve is the uh, true curve is written over here true stress strain curve actually okay now and due to the formation of necking necking formation this one is a necking formation okay so the curves choose the same like this one okay now this point is the ultimate strength you already know okay this is the ultimate strength it is the maximum uh, strength you can say and this last point is the fracture point beyond this the metal, metal will crack or break you can say okay now so this is the all thing you need to know about the stress strain car next is the look here it is very clear to you i can okay this one now you can take a screenshot of this or you can simply you know just uh, just remember this thing okay so it will help you to so this is the plastic region okay so you can take screenshot if you want to remember which one is the plastic region so we will be dealing with this region only so this region is our region okay this one okay so this one is the plastic region uh, elastic region and this one is the plastic region okay so now Uh, here again this is the proportional limit beyond this this one actually these two points this uh, yielding point uh, uh, proportional limit and this uh, elastic limit these are uh, you can consider uh, more or less similar actually in some uh, books they have given uh, a small distance between this proportional limit and elastic limit and the yield point is somewhat after the you know this elastic limit okay some books considers this elastic limit and proportional limit to be the same point okay but uh, you can consider is this as a proportional limit and this one as the elastic limit and up to the elastic limit is you know hooke's law is valid this up to this elastic limit but we are more concerned with this region this is the plastic region where the strain hardening actually occurs okay now let us i think it is more obvious to you about the stress strain curve now let us uh, start with work hardening actually what is work hardening so work hardening uh, is a you know it is a phenomenon where uh, ductile metals becomes stronger and harder sometimes this work hardening is also known as strain hardening you can also uh, you must have heard the term as strain hardening so work hardening is similar to that of strain hard uh, strain hardening actually okay so this phenomenon uh, you can uh, say that uh, when ductile materials become stronger and harder when they are deformed plastically is called hardening that i was talking about this is the region uh, this is the region in this region it is uh, plastical plastically deformed okay and then it becomes stronger and harder when they are deformed plastically and it is known as work hardening okay look they they have written over here again 
that I was talking about. Work hardening is also known as strain hardening or cold working as well. Okay. Now, next we have the stages of work hardening. Okay. So this is uh, in depth you can say about the stages of work hardening. You just uh, just have an idea, just a little bit of idea. This is a curve, what it looks like. This is a stage one uh, work hardening. This is a stage two work hardening. And this is a stage three work hardening. This is just to give you a, a little bit of idea. No need to go in, you know, in depth. Okay. So they are saying that uh, stage one is easily glide, easy glide region. Stage two is linear hardening region and stage three is parabolic hardening region. Look, you can see from, uh, you can easily guess from this particular graph that uh, with the uh, you know preceding of the stages the uh, work hardening region or the stress actually this is a shear stress so with the you know this one is a strain with the increasing strain uh, that is load the stress is also increased so that is all you need to know about the stages of work hardening okay. just main thing you need to remember about this work hardening is that uh, ductile materials mainly it, it is uh, happening in case of ductile materials as because in brittle materials they will just simply break you know so there is uh, no such uh, concept in uh, actually in brittle materials so work hardening is more concerned with ductile materials only so this is the phenomenon where uh, ductile materials become stronger and harder when they are deformed plastically so it is known as work hardening so that you all need to know about this work hardening or strain hardening you can say so now coming to the theory of work hardening just uh, a little bit of knowledge is very much needed for you that's why i have taken this slide a little bit larger you know so i'm giving time over this as because it is important you will be facing this term in uh, each and every class of you know metal forming process so that's why i have taken this extra slides for work hardening as well so it says uh, in the theory of work hardening it says before work hardening the lattice of the material exhibits a regular nearly defect free pattern before work hardening defect free pattern there is defect free pattern the lattice of the material you already know that lattice, concept of lattice you already heard this term from your material science classes okay now as the material is work hardened it becomes increasingly saturated with new dislocations so actually they are talking about this you know this lattice things this structure you can say the metal structures you can say the simply you can just guess the structure of the material just exhibits a nearly directory pattern and as the work ma material is work hardened it becomes increasingly saturated with new dislocations so they are talking about the crystal structure you already heard the name of structure of the you know the crystal okay so before before the uh, work hardening uh, uh, the material is a defect free pattern okay now after the work hardening uh, as the metal is uh, work hardened it becomes uh, increasingly uh, saturated with new dislocations you already dislocation is very important twinning sleep dislocations right? these are the dislocations actually uh, sleeps and twinning they are mainly associated with metal forming you might uh, get MCQs in your competitive examinations about dislocations. Okay, so slip and twinning are the most commonly dislocations that are being widely used in uh, metal forming processes. Okay. So, as the material is work hardened, it becomes increasingly saturated with new dislocations, and more dislocations are prevented from nucleating. A resistance to dislocation formation develops. So that's where the work hardening is formed. You understand what I mean to say? Look, as the metal is work hardened, previously it was defect free pattern. As the work, as the material is work hardened, it becomes increasingly saturated with new dis dislocations. The material is already being saturated with dislocations. And what happens in that case? No nucleus, no more, you know, dislocation is allowed to form, and that makes the material more hardened. So that is, you know is the work hardening process okay what it writes over here this resistance to dislocation formation manifests itself as a resistance to plastic deformation so it resists with more power after work hardening to plastic deformation that means you cannot you know easily break the material as because it is work hardened okay 
so it provides or you can say it resists more to plastic deformations hence the observed strengthening so that is the theory behind the work hardening and as a consequence of this uh, strain hardening a material is improved strength and hardness but material ductility be reduced so this is very important in, uh, in hot working also so this thing you have to face while working on the materials maybe hot working or cold working uh, as a result of you know cold working strain hardening is improved we will be studying this in uh, cold working also for now on just uh, keep on this one this uh, consequence of strain hardening material is improved strength and hardness but material ductility may be reduced so strength is strength and hardness is increased but the ductility is reduced so that is the important point you must must take in note of this one okay now after performing this process to the material the dislocation of atoms become more difficult which make the material stronger so that was i already told you that after performing this process to the material the dislocation of the atoms becomes more difficult as because they are saturated with the dislocation so there is no questions of more dislocation so as because the the structure the lattice you know the lattice the structure of the uh, crystal or metal you can say is already saturated with the dislocations of the atoms that's why it prevents the plastic deformation okay further that's why it becomes much more difficult uh, uh, to uh, you know deform it plastically and which as a result of which it becomes more and more strong now look here uh, in the syllabus they have uh, given um, you know heading of uh, principle of metal forming theory look uh, principle in principle of metal forming theory uh, there will be some discussions on um, different uh, you know failure theories you might wonder what are these failure theories you never might have heard this terms failure theories but in uh, next semester we will be having a uh, quality knowledge on uh, failure theories maximum principal stress theory shear stress theory uh, principal uh, strain theory distortion energy theory okay so we will be just having a you know floating idea on this one you just need to hear about this but uh, in details we will be discussing in your machine design class machine designing you will be get a lot to learn about the different theories of failure there you will be given the opportunity to learn elaborately about the different theories of failures okay um, that is the rank kinds theory for brittle materials maximum principal stress theory principal uh, uh, strain energy theory uh, shear stress theory gest and preska st vinens theory so there are mainly four to five theories you will be having in uh, your syllabus uh, to be taught in machine design for now on we'll be just taking to the floating knowledge of uh, this particular uh, failure theories okay so uh, before starting to the directly to the fa failure theories you just need to just recapitulate this uh, basic things that is a nominal and two stresses and strains these are already we have covered in the you know this uh, strength of material classes uh, but to recapitulate once more the two stresses are calculated by uh, dividing the load p you already know p by the current or instantaneous cross sectional area instantaneous means particular at that time so each and every time the cross section is you know changed if you are stretching the bar the cross section is reduced while while you are compressing the bar the cross section is enlarged so instantaneous cross section means the change in the cross section at, at each and every time every point of the loading you can say better so that is the instantaneous cross section area so that is known as true stress there is a true stress okay so it is given by sigma equals to p by a and this a is the instantaneous cross sectional area okay which means at the instant of measuring the load okay 
Now true strain. Now true strain prior to no necking. Necking means you might be knowing the necking, but just this one. Actually, this one. Sorry for my drawing. Actually, I mean to say that uh, previously it was like that one. Now you are giving. Say you are stretching. Okay. So tensile forces. Say you are applying tensile forces. Okay. So both the sides. So where what will happen? It will. This one is decrease in the thickness. That is the necking formation. So this is the necking formation. This is the necking formation. Okay, now, so true strain prior to necking is obtained by referring small incremental change in length to the instantaneous length. Instantaneous length means at each and every loading, the length is known as instantaneous length. So each and every point you have to consider the length. That is known as the instantaneous length. Okay. So once again, true strain prior to necking. Prior to necking, when when the material is simply not stretched or necking formation is not happened, so true strain prior to necking is obtained by referring small incremental change in length to the instantaneous length L, and the true strain is calculated by epsilon equal to L zero to L that is the initial original to final length dl by L. Or it can be written as ln L by L0. So true strain is also called as logarithmic strain, incremental strain, or simply as natural strain. So this is very important basic things. So you have to keep in mind. Next, look principle of metal forming theory. Now experimental stress strain flow curve. The relationship between stress and strain is obtainable using the experimental uniaxial tensile test at constant temperature and strain rate, loading speed. Okay, that what I was talking about. Uh, uh, simply, a rod is being stretched for both the sides. Okay. Now, the uniaxial compression planar strain and torsion test can also be obtained. Uh, used to obtain the same relationship between stress and strain. Okay. The relationship is obtained by continuous loading rather than by cyclic loading used in fatigue test. Look, in fatigue test, uh, we will be having cyclic loading. Cyclic loading. The same member, this member or in the bottom, the uppermost member or the lowermost member, the same member is subjected to at a time, not actually at a time, uh, first it is subject to say tension, second, it is subject to compression. So alternatively, it is the same member, the same portion of the particular material is subject to tension as well as compression. So alternatively, tension and compression, tension and compression. This type of loading is a cyclic loading you are going to obtain in the fatigue test. Okay. So this type of test is called quasi-static stress strain flow curve and run under slow strain nearly 10 to 3 seconds. Okay. The flow curve of most metals, either of the three forms, look, shown in the figure, type 1, 2, 3, this one. So, these are the curves originated from common experimental engineering stress strain flow curves of our metals. The first one is this one, this one, straight line is coming out of it. Second type is this one. Third type, you are getting this one, yielding occurs. So, these are the curves. So, uh, this is the thing uh, for today only and from tomorrow we will be having some idea on um, failure theories. Okay. So, for today only I will just have my class for here only. Thank you for watching.